Hey, thanks so much for watching this Drawing for Adults class. This class is offered as a partnership between the Ann Arbor District Library and the Ann Arbor Art Center, both located downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today we're going to be doing a really fun subtractive drawing exercise. So I'm going to do this quick little example first that's going to be a little bit shorter and that's what I recommend doing something that's starting with a little bit more of a simple kind of design and then doing a more complex one later. So our first step, as you can see, here is going to be to coat our paper with charcoal. So with this, what we're doing um, is simply covering our whole sheet of paper with our charcoal stick. So you're going to want to use a nice soft charcoal um, such as a 4B or a 6B. And then if you have a soft chamois or um, some other kind of really soft cotton rag, that would be really great to just kind of gently rub over the surface of your paper so that you soften it up a little bit so that it's not so textured. So you can see here that I have kind of a softer look on mine. So what's great about this is rather than drawing with the charcoal, we're actually gonna be drawing with our eraser. So once we have everything smoothed out, you're gonna use your eraser to actually pull out the highlights, which is opposite of what we normally would do. Normally we would start probably by sketching out every part of the still life, and instead we are just going to start with our eraser and we're just erasing the charcoal that's there. So I'm I am going to keep this one pretty simple here. I am doing this digitally, so I do recognize that I can um, make my eraser super, super small and tiny, um, but I'm not going to do that too much anyway. I'll try to keep it more natural as if it were something that you were actually, um, you know, doing in real life with an actual um, eraser in person, a physical eraser. So if you're wondering how do I erase if I make a mistake, right? Normally we would erase something if we draw something that we don't want to do, but in this case we're erasing, so how do we, do we draw it back? And the answer is kind of yes. Um, have that charcoal stick handy. So if you do accidentally erase something that you need to draw back in, you can use that charcoal, you can use your cloth, you can see me doing that right there, um, and just kind of come back and smudge over it and then erase it again as you need to. So that will definitely be um, really helpful to have that charcoal stick handy. So if you do make a mistake, you can easily kind of color it back in and, and smudge over it. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple more details. Like I said, I'm gonna just do this one real quick just so that you get an idea of the process of where we're going, where we're headed, all of that. And I do recommend you doing something simple like a really basic two object still life like this or even just one object just to get a good feeling for how the process of subtractive drawing goes. It feels weird, I will admit. It's kind of confusing at first because it's literally opposite than what we're used to. Instead of drawing in the shadows, the shadows already exist. So instead, we are pulling out the highlights with our eraser. When we don't normally draw with our eraser, we erase our drawings with our eraser. So it's a, definitely a different mode of making. So it takes Takes, um, takes a while, there's an adjustment period. So here's the other one I'm gonna do, which is much more, I've spent a little more time on this one. Um, I probably spent a little over an hour drawing that one and the other one maybe closer to half an hour. So again, going a little bit more in depth here. Um, these are the two different types of charcoals or a couple different types of charcoals. So we have vine and willow and then we also have compressed. Now, vine and willow, they're both much lighter, so they're almost more like a gray. Whereas your compressed charcoal here, such as a 6B or a 4B, it's going to be much darker, and a 2B, if you happen to have a 2B compressed, is going to be more of gray. So vine and willow, you're going to find that they erase really easily, so that might be nice, but you're not going to get your really, really deep, rich darks with vine or willow because they are a lot lighter. So what you're seeing here is a little quick little photo 
of the still life that I'm looking at. So I am, I do have this set up in person so that I'm able to see it um, better. I can see my highlights so much better and all of that, but I just took a quick photo so that you're able to kind of see what I'm working with, where I'm headed. So once again, I'm just using my eraser to pull out the highlights that I see. One thing that you may have noticed in that photo is that I had a desk lamp that was lit directly on my still life. Lighting is key here, okay? We wanna make sure that we have a great light source that's shining really bright, but that's also casting some really incredibly dark shadows. That's how we're gonna make this the most compelling kind of still life, so that you don't just have a bunch of midtones, but that you have really nice bright light whites, but also really nice, rich, deep darks. So make sure that you set up your still life really close to your light source, whether that's in a window or right underneath some kind of lamp. Um, a nice direct light source is definitely the way to go. So once you get that base layer of your highlights pulled out, then you want to go ahead and start pressing down a little bit harder with that eraser so you can see See me doing that now, which means I'm going to be able to pull more of my highlights out and I'm erasing more of that charcoal. Now, if you're using compressed charcoal, compressed charcoal definitely does not erase nearly as easily as your vine or willow charcoal does. But at the same time, um, you're still going to be able to erase quite a bit. You might be seeing that you're getting a little bit of that texture of the charcoal, that kind of bumpy texture, especially depending on what kind of paper that you're using. So don't worry about some of that. It might look a little different than mine. You can always do a quick search um, on the internet of just looking up what other subtractive drawing still lifes look like so that you can get a good idea. Now, this is a still life. There's certainly all sorts of really amazing figure drawings and portraiture and stuff like that that you can look at too. We're gonna start with just keeping it simple, looking at some basic objects here. So anyway, um, as you can see now, I'm moving on to that apple in the same way that I did my little ceramic base thing. Um, I'm just going slow and I do have the ability um, to use a small eraser and so I am but in your case if you're using just a white vinyl eraser or a kneaded eraser which are those gray squishy ones or if you're just using the pink eraser on the back of your Ticonderoga pencil hey that's going to be great because it's a nice small eraser so whatever you have will probably work so don't feel the need to go out and buy something special but white vinyl eraser kneaded erasers all of those are really great for a kneaded eraser you can kind of just pull and stretch it until it gets clean which is great you don't have to worry about having a bunch of eraser shapes versus if you were using a white vinyl or plastic eraser you do get a lot of eraser shavings obviously with this so you have to be careful but that's where you can use that rag that we used earlier for um, kind of blending and smudging we can use that rag to um, wipe away some of those excess little eraser shavings so that way they don't uh, you don't accidentally smudge them with your hand you don't get charcoal all over your hand as well because that's never fun and then you end up if you have it on your hands it's likely you'll keep smudging the rest of your drawing so now I am starting to get a little bit more detailed with this fabric back here in the background. I'm not going to get too detailed here, but I just want you to still see the process. I think, I think for this kind of project, um, it's one of those things that the more that you do it, the better you'll get, the more natural it will become. It's a very backwards way of thinking because you were so used to um, using our erasers in a very different way, using our charcoal in a very different way. So it's kind of opposite, but it's really so much fun. I 
can tell you while I was doing this, I just got so lost in the objects, lost in the highlights and the shadows, in the folds of the fabric and the texture of the little rim there on that vase. I mean, everything, I just, I had so much fun creating this and I am not a still life artist by any means. Um, and I don't even really teach the more traditional kinds of still lifes that often, but it's so fun, but you do kind of have to let yourself enjoy the process and accept that there's a learning curve. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will have a great time creating this project.